Similar neck fracture can occur as a result of low energy trauma, as in the elderly, and in this case you need to get medical consultation. It also can occur from a high energy, as in falls or motor vehicle accidents, can occur in the old and in the young, and in this case you need to apply the ATLS protocol. Also, femoral neck fracture can occur from insufficiency fracture because of weak bone, because of osteoporosis or osteopenia. The patient will have groin pain, pain with axial compression. The x-ray may be normal, can be helpful in diagnosing the insufficiency fracture. You can also have a stress fracture due to overuse and more loading on the hips it can happen in athletes, in ballet dancers, in military recruits. The classification can be anatomic classification. You can have the subcapital fracture, which is common, or the trans cervical fracture and the basi cervical fracture. Subcapital fracture has two famous classifications, the Garden classification and the Powell's classification. We start with the Garden's classification. It classifies the fractures according to the amount or the degree of displacement. It really relates the amount of displacement to the risk of vascular disruption. This classification applies to the geriatric and insufficiency fractures. Declassify the fracture into two groups, a non-displaced type 1 and type 2, and displaced type 3 and type 4. Type 1, incomplete fracture and impacted in valgus. Type 2, the fracture is complete and none displaced on at least two planes, the AP and the lateral. Type 3, the fracture is complete and partially displaced. The trabecular pattern of the femoral head does not line up with the establer trabecular pattern. In type 4, the fracture is completely displaced with no continuity between the proximal and the distal fragments, and the trapecular pattern of the femoral head remains parallel with the establum trabecular pattern. Powell's classification. There are three fracture types within the Powell's fracture classification. It classifies the fracture according to the orientation and the direction of the fracture line across the femoral neck. It relates to the biomechanical stability. The more vertical the fracture, the more shear forces and the more complication rate. Type 1 have an obliquity less than 30 degree. Type 2 has an obliquity from 30 to 50 degrees. Type 3 has an obliquity between 50 to 70 degrees or more. As the fracture progress from type 1 to type 3, the obliquity of the fracture line increases. The fracture line becomes more vertical. The shear forces increase and the instability increases. Horizontal fractures are good and stable. Vertical fractures are bad and unstable. The more displaced the fracture, the more disruption of the blood supply and the chance of vascular necrosis and non-union, which can occur in about 25% of displaced fractures. If a non-union occur in a young patient, you may help the patient by doing subtrochanteric osteotomy to reorient the fracture line from vertical 
to horizontal. That will help the fracture healing. Another area of interest is the femoral neck fractures associated with femoral shaft fractures. The typical neck fracture is vertical and non-displaced. It may require internal rotation view x-rays to see that fracture. This fracture can be missed. The treatment of this associated fractures is to fix the femoral neck fracture first, followed by femoral shaft fracture. The usual combination is parallel screws in the neck and retrograde femoral rod for the fracture femur. Another interesting fracture is type 3 Pipkin fracture. So you will have fracture of the femoral head plus dislocation of the hip plus fracture of the femoral neck. Try to avoid reduction of the hip dislocation by closed means. You may want to do an open reduction of the hip dislocation, especially if the femoral neck fracture is not displaced. Stress fractures. It's more common in females due to the female athlete triad. It can be a tension fractures, a fracture or a callus is present on the superior aspect of the femoral neck. We know adult bone is weak in tension, so we will fix that. We need to fix that. No question about it. In fact, it should be an emergency operation before the fracture displaces. In compression fractures, the fracture or callus is present on the inferior aspect of the femoral neck. Some people say if the fracture is less than 50% across the neck, the fracture could be stable and you can do protected crutch ambulation. And if the fracture is more than 50% across the neck, then the fracture is unstable and you will do RIF. Some people fix all stress fractures of the femoral neck. A female runner and groin pain is a stress fracture. Get an MRI and you probably have to fix the fracture.